find a new elite, you know, and become their their patrons or kind of jostle that that current elite out of power. So one of the things that you you talk about is basically like how to get our guys kind of up Maslow's hierarchy, you know, up to the point where they are, you know, at the point where they have disposable income, they have a little bit of, of sway, right? And I think it's important for a couple of reasons, which is one, wealth and power are not synonymous, but there's a strong correlation, right? As part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also just from the perspective of like having conversations like these are to a certain extent a luxury good. You know, if you are just kind of working a, as I've done before, like working like a 60 hour job, it's mm-hmm. very, very difficult to actually think. And right. I think that, you know, when you have a group of people who have a lot of mental horsepower, they're kind of wasted, you know, this, this is exactly kind of my inspiration too, is that we, we do a lot of talking and not a lot of action and, you know, it, it'd be a lot easier if we would just actually fix these problems instead of uh, talking about it, especially kind of more of these maybe high minded ideals of, you know, a, a new Caesar or, you know, well, when we're in charge, things will be different. And it's like, okay, can we just be able to not to be all Jordan Peterson, but maybe we should make our bed and, you know, afford buying uh, a starter home before we try conquering the world. No, certainly. And I think that, you know, part of that, and I think that this is because I have, I have my own like limited data on my audience. Mm -hmm. And while my audience is older than me, it's not by much, you know, and I get the sense that the average guy in these circles, the average listener, just going off of, you know, what I see and what others have is basically a guy in his late twenties to early Mm thirties, you know, and obviously there are tales on both ends. But to me, I do think that, I mean, to be honest, it's a lot of guys who aren't necessarily exactly where they want to be, you know? And so I do think that there is a certain amount of resentment from that. Now, part of that on the front end, especially with younger guys, is that uh, it is, if you don't meet certain criteria, you're barred from certain traditional avenues. The ladder has been pulled up from right. Them. right and that's obviously not 100 percent the case you know there are certainly successful young men but it is that feeling of kind of like wait a minute why can't i do this anymore mm-hmm. you know so there's something so what are your kind of suggestions for someone in that situation like what's a good way to, to go forward or are you talking more necessarily about like that needs to be a priority i guess um so that's a great you know <laughs> because i'm older in my early 40s and the nature of the work i do um i I mean, that's a good question. I want to come back to that. But uh, contextually, I tend to think of it more from the patrician point of view of how do we, you know, how do we, how do we get an investor pool of people who could have, you know, maybe $50 million to invest in private equity, where we know that the businesses we're investing in share our values and are our guys, and that they're going to be managed accordingly with that. Um, Part of that too, so a point I did want to get into without getting in the deep end here is uh, I observe there's a difference between, there's kind of like a tendency to, to try to cash in on a scene uh, and, you know, all due respect to Oron and the, you know, um, the guys at Blaze, uh, uh, Matt, what's his name? I'm spacing on his name right now, but, you know, they're selling to an audience, right? So, so all of the advertisements that they run and Hey, you got to run ads because you got to, you know, make generate revenue and make profit in order to, to succeed. But, um, they're kind of doing it in an entertainment point of view. And then they're selling to an audience, which is a very traditional business model. But I think it's incomplete because it's not looking at the, the holistic cycle of, okay, is the audience that you're catering to who are the ones that you care about and and feel camaraderie with, uh, are they better off because they're buying these things that you're selling them? Sometimes, you know, crowd health, maybe. Uh, Sugar-free cereal, I'm not so sure. (laughs) You know, not to, to, you know, get any sponsors uh, knocked out like uh, Norm MacDonald and the Mangrate. But uh, the converse of that, that I think we need to examine more is like the Chick-fil-A model where they're selling, you know, God sandwich to everybody, uh, even maybe people who hate them, uh, you know, as a company or, or their ethical guidelines, but they like that sandwich so much that they buy it anyway. And then they're making money hand over fist, but they are extremely selective about uh, who they employ and even more extremely selective about who they allow to buy into that franchise. 
Um, and they also make sure that it's not purely economic driven. They'll, they'll make sure there's enough diversification of ownership within a geographic reason so that it's not just like one super wealthy person who owns like a whole state or something like that. That kind of more dynamic thought of how to grow, you know, like a healthy economy, um, very similar to the, like Mark Spitznagel's idea and Dow of Capital of um, kind of fast growth that isn't durable versus uh, slow growth that tends to be stronger. So like, you know, a slow growing oak tree versus a fast growing pine tree. Having that, you know, something where the ecology is going to be more resilient and not just uh, fast, but becomes tinder. Basically, this is kind of where my thought is, is, is how do we actually get something sustainable? And then a big part of that, too, is that you're building loyalty and you're building culture. You're, you're giving people roots. You're giving people ties, which is something we talk a lot about. And yet, you know, at the end of talking about it, we all go home and feel terribly atomized and like we're losing that. So for all our talk of creating culture, well, we need to do it. And in order to do it, it needs to be economically viable. So, you know, all these things, I think, are tied together. And that's you know, let's actually solve that problem it is basically where I'm headed. Well, and I think that that's something that you see other parallel societies engage in, right? That like you have, you have right. the Amish, mm -hmm. you know, and don't get me wrong. I, I think the, the Amish are, the regime is eventually going to come for the Amish. It's just kind of a question of when they're kind of a low priority. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you have a, what's largely a, a parallel society, but they do index with wider culture for economic reasons, right? Mm -hmm. That you can buy furniture from the Amish, you can buy baked goods. You know, there are certain businesses that kind of cater to that. And, you know, even kind of less strict, but still kind of parallel societies like Mennonites do it mm -hmm. at kind of a level that's perhaps more achievable for someone who's not willing to go full on Luddite. You know, it's this idea that there is very much still an us and them, mm -hmm. but it is the, you know, the in group does kind of go outside of their of their social network. And one of the things that I think is important, and I realize that this whole thing is still at a nascent stage, but one of the positive signs I'm seeing is the kind of development of social and relational capital, right? People meeting together, developing kind of a system of basically, hey, someone needs something, you know, let's let's work together. Like, hey, do you know a guy who does this? Do you know a guy who does that? Now, some of that's completely informal and the informal network is probably faster than a formalized one, but it's also limited by, you know, kind of like word of mouth. And then you have what the guys at, you know, new founding or what the guys at, uh, it's new founding. And then the other one by Bennett's factory, I cannot remember exit group are doing, mm -hmm. which is kind of a formalized uh, version of that. that I think is, is interesting. 